If you believe that everyone has a unique learning style, some people are visual, some people are auditory, then you would be just a normal person, but you'd also be wrong. It's what we call a neuro myth, which is a belief about the brain, which is just not true. And it's one of the most widely believed neuro myths, and it's one of the most widely refuted, and that a lot of people know that it's wrong. But if you believe that learning styles are not relevant for you, you'd also kind of be wrong. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what learning styles are, what are the problems and the research around learning styles, and also why the way that most people just reject it is a little premature. There are some really useful ways that you can think about learning styles that would actually help you to improve. So whether you believe in learning styles or you don't, I think this video is gonna help you to be a more efficient learner. If you're new to this channel and you're wondering what I know about learning and who I am, I'm Dr. Justin Sung. I'm a learning coach and the head of learning at I Can Study. I'm also a former medical doctor. For the last decade, I've helped thousands of learners from all around the world to become more efficient learners. My work puts me in a really interesting space because I get to spend a lot of time reading the research and then spend a lot of time practicing it and coaching it to people and seeing how effective it really is. And in a recent video, I talked about learner types and how understanding your learner type can really help you to improve very quickly. And I made a distinction that this is not the same as learning styles. A lot of you said that you wanted me to make a more in-depth video about learning styles and the problems with them. And so here it is. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like for the algorithm. The algorithm dictates how many people this video will reach and it also apparently dictates how well I sleep at night. So first of all, what is the concept of learning styles? Learning styles is this concept that individuals have unique styles of learning that they're better at. For example, if you're a visual learner, then you're better at learning through images and diagrams and, and pictures. And if you're an auditory learner, you're better at learning through listening or speaking. If you're a read and write learner, then you're better at learning through reading and writing. It's kind of in the name. If you're a kinesthetic learner, then you're better at learning through experimentation and getting your hands dirty with it. And there are actually lots of other different ways of classifying learning styles, which has happened over the years. But the most common one is this one called VAC or VAC, which stands for Visual Auditory Read and Write Kinesthetic. And so the idea is that if you are a teacher, then you should figure out the learning style of your student and therefore teach to that learning style. And likewise, if you're a learner, you should figure out your own learning style and learn to learn in that style, which is gonna be more efficient for you. And it's a widely believed, actually almost like intuitive understanding about how the brain works. There are some studies that say that over 90% of teachers will believe this, but the problem is that it's just not true. Learning styles is actually this concept that came around in the 70s which was not really based on any real research. It was just kind of a theory that someone just pulled out of a hat one day and they were like, I feel like this is how the brain learns. And back in the seventies, like we didn't really have high standards for journal article and publications. Like there's some crazy stuff if you look at the older journals. But around the 70s, that's also when we had this huge self-esteem movement. Like everyone is special, everyone's like their own special snowflake. And so therefore learning styles sort of fit in with that. Like, yes, I am a unique special human being and therefore I must have a unique special way of learning as well. And so fast forward like 50 years, it is now one of the most deeply ingrained myths about learning that we tend to believe. And I guess fake news likes company because it sits alongside other neuro myths like we only use 10% of our brain or that some people are left-brained or right-brained. Both of those things are also myths. And so in the case of learning styles, it's really been researched quite a lot now over the last few decades. The case has sort of been put to rest. We have a substantial amount of research that shows that people do not have like a single unique learning style that they are better at. Essentially, every human being is a stronger visual processor than anything else. And even if you are technically a auditory learner style based on some quiz, which by the way, like that quiz is created by a for-profit company that creates royalties on people doing that quiz, by the way. Even if you were an auditory style learner, what studies show is that you're still like thousands of times faster at processing visual information because that's just how the human brain works. And also, regardless of your learning style, everyone performs better when they use a mix of styles. And actually, what seems to make more of a difference is trying to match the learning style you use for the type of information that you're learning rather than saying, I can only learn in a certain way. And this is really just to say that the methods that you use should change depending on the topic that you're learning, which seems relatively self-explanatory. Most people don't study 
maths or engineering the same way they study Spanish and history. Or maybe you do and your only technique is that you use flashcards endlessly and if that's the case then <laughs> there is other problems that we need to talk about. But at the end of the day the question is kind of like who cares? Why does it actually matter if learning styles are real or not? Well there are actually some serious problems that this causes and as a learning coach I see the consequences of this every day. One of the major problems is ironically, when you believe in learning styles, then it stops you from becoming a better learner. I've had so many people come up to me of all ages, like high school, university, you know, PhD, uh, working professionals, entrepreneurs, come up to me and say that they've got problems with their learning, which fundamentally stem from believing in learning styles. Because if you fundamentally believe that the only way to build a house effectively is to use the one tool that is uniquely efficient for you, then you're going to run into problems building that house. Believing in learning styles creates this artificial limit on how you think your brain has to learn. And this is something that in the research people call pigeonholing. It means that you create this little box for yourself and you live inside that little box. And that is just not going to be conducive to success. Every learner needs to be able to use multiple different methods, multiple different tools, operate with multiple different styles, depending on the information type, depending on the resource type that's available. And they need to be able to synthesize and construct good learning out of that. Most of the time, we don't have a choice on the type of learning style we have available to us. Like if someone is only teaching something to you like by speaking it, you have to be able to learn auditorily. And also if you love audiobooks but you're just not a auditory learner, then what does that mean? You can never learn from an audiobook? Not only is it cognitively more beneficial to use multiple different styles to generate learning, but we don't even have a choice. Like you have to learn that skill anyway. Otherwise you're just gonna be this person that's like sitting there in class, the lecturer is telling you about stuff and you're just like, Oh, I just can't learn auditorily, like it just doesn't work for me. And then later on in the workforce, your boss is gonna give you some instructions and you're gonna be like, oh wait, I'm a visual learner. Can you make a flow diagram for that? Like someone's trying to teach you how to play basketball one day and you're like, I just need a Venn diagram. Like I just can't understand it. So you can see the options are pretty limited if you are committing to learning styles. And by the way, on the other side of this, like for teachers, it's really detrimental as well because it adds a lot more work and a lot more pressure and burden for teachers to try to deliver like this perfect education and perfect lesson that's suited for every person's unique learning style. And then if the student is not performing, it's like, oh, it's a teacher's fault because they didn't teach it properly. They didn't match my learning style. And so there's really a lot of problems with believing in learning styles. And it's especially sad because a lot of people and even teachers, when they think about the pride they take on how they've personalized something, like I've personalized my learning style or I've personalized the way that I teach my students, usually the thing that they have try to optimize is learning styles. But learning styles are not the bane of the learning world. There is a useful and effective way of thinking about learning styles that is genuinely very helpful and beneficial. What I've noticed recently is that people that know a little bit about the learning research, they love to hate on learning styles. Like learning styles has become like the new flat earth of learning. Like, you know that joke about how you can always tell if someone's a vegan because they're gonna tell you about it, or you know someone does CrossFit because they're gonna tell you about it. Not that I have anything against vegans or CrossFit, by the way. Well, it's kind of like that with people that know this whole thing about learning styles. Like they'll be walking down the road and they hear someone talk about learning styles and they just slide in and they say, learning styles are not and they just fly away. But I actually do think that there is a good way of thinking about learning styles. The thing about completely rejecting learning styles is that it doesn't acknowledge the parts of learning styles that are true. Everyone does have a personalized way of learning. Everyone has a method of learning that they have to figure out and build over time. And everyone has learning preferences. If we say learning styles do not exist, then it's like, oh, well, so does that mean that everyone learns the same way? No, personalized learning and personalized learning systems do exist. However, we have to separate that from learning styles, which is kind of the idea that biologically our brain has to learn in a certain style for it to be effective. So you might be wondering a few things like, okay, if you take learning styles away, what does a personalized learning system actually mean? What does learning preferences mean? And then how do you actually build that personalized learning system? And these are all very good questions that I'm gonna jump into. But another question that you might be having is, 
who's this video's sponsor? Which is a fantastic question. Uh, you can probably tell based on my shirt, the sponsor of this video is right, yeah, there we go, I Can Study, which is my company. Like I said before, I've spent the last decade learning about learning, applying it myself to become a top learner, and then teaching thousands of people to become top learners as well. And I've distilled down that experience into a step-by-step -step guided program where you can learn the easiest and smoothest way to become a more efficient learner while asking questions and getting feedback on your work and being part of a really vibrant, amazingly supportive community. And it is not a magic pill. It's not going to solve all of your learning problems overnight. It does take time. It does take effort. But for those of you that are serious about becoming a more efficient learner, then this is the best place to start. You can learn more and check it out at iCanStudy.com. You can find the link in the description. So with that, Great question answered. Let's move on to the other ones. Let's start with the idea of learning preferences. Most people that have gone through formal education have a learning preference that's a combination of visual and reading and writing. And a lot of that is just because of habits and prior experience. It's important to realize that your learning preferences are often not based on what is most effective for you, but it's going to be a combination of what is effective and what are you used to and the things that you're used to are not necessarily effective. If that were the case, then the pathway to becoming the most efficient learner would be to continuously just do the thing that you are the most comfortable with, which is in fact what most people do, and that's also the reason why most people struggle. Everyone has preferences, but actually challenging those preferences is important. And the next thing is, what does personalized learning look like if we take learning styles out of the equation? Well, one of the things that I think learning styles is useful for is to give us different ways of thinking about learning and its modalities. For example, if you currently are mostly doing read and write style note taking, then you're probably going to benefit from incorporating some visual elements in there. And if there's a modality that you struggle with, like a lot of people struggle to just listen and learn, then you have to think, well, what are the methods that I can use to become better at that? Using learning styles as a guide to think about different methods can help us to focus our attention on addressing the weaknesses and improving our strengths. Like I said before, everyone should be a mixed mode learner, but the specific mix of modes that you use for different subjects and different topics and in different parts of the learning process, like when you're first encoding information for the first time versus when you're trying to practice rehearsal and retrieval, these two situations might have different types of combinations. And so there is a lot of personalization that can occur in understanding which combination is more effective for you, how you make certain modalities work for you, and then how you adjust that overall system depending on the needs and challenges that you have. The problem is that a lot of people think about personalization like they think about creativity. Creativity is not about creating something that is completely new and novel, it's about creating a variation on something that already exists. For example, I don't know if you guys have seen these like Thai life insurance commercials, where they tell this like really emotional story of someone's life, like it's a whole movie, and then at the end it's like, that's why you need life insurance. And personally, I love those ads. I think they're really creative, but they're still just a variation on an established norm. You're telling a compelling story that creates relevance leading up to a point where you're then selling the product. Something that was literally completely new and novel would be trying to sell life insurance by dressing up as a clown and rubbing tofu on people's face on the street and screaming at them to buy life insurance. Like it's just totally random. And I don't think it would work. But you can see the same thing is true for learning. Like there are some fundamental, pretty universal principles about learning that everyone needs to follow as long as they have a human brain that is biologically the same as another human brain. And once we understand what those patterns of thinking and those structures are, we can then be personalized within those structures. For example, one of the things I talk a lot about is nonlinear note taking, and you can check that out in the video here. And there are certain principles of nonlinear note taking that are just gonna make it easier and more effective for everyone. But then the actual way that you execute on those principles and on those guidelines is going to be unique to you. Likewise, one of the most critical parts of deep processing, which is a type of thinking that helps you gain a deeper memory and better understanding, is to be able to think in networks and relationships. But the type of relationships and networks that you form and what makes sense to you, that's going to depend on your prior knowledge as well as what you find relevant. And that's actually going to be unique to you. Personalization of learning is not something that happens because 
you are setting out to become unique, it is a natural consequence of what happens when you become more efficient with using the principles. And the reason I'm emphasizing this so much is because that process of building a personalized learning system is a process. Unlike with learning styles, which basically just says like, hey, here's a technique, just use it great, now you're an amazing learner, which doesn't actually work. The harsh reality is that it takes time to build an effective learning system. All the stuff that I've said just now is probably not as sexy as a quick tip around learning styles, which is probably why it's not gonna be as popular and mainstream. But none of that changes the fact that at the end of the day, if you want to be an efficient learner with a learning system that works for you, you have to go through this process of exploration, discovery, trial and error, experimentation and reflection, and it takes time. People often ask me, Justin, you, you know, put out all this content out there for free, aren't you afraid that if this becomes like so common, that then everyone will be an efficient learner and then it's not gonna be special anymore. I genuinely am not worried about that at all because my YouTube channel does not grow very fast. But seriously, because it takes time and effort. Like most people are looking for the shortcut and this is not a shortcut. And so if you're listening to me saying this now and you've made it to this point of the video, then you probably are one of those people that is willing to take this a little bit more seriously. So for you, I would recommend checking out my video on learner types. Put a link in the description, but your learner type rather than learning style is what are the current systems and habits and methods that you currently are using and how is that either helping you or holding you back. When you figure out your learning type, it becomes much clearer why you might be having certain problems and why you might be better at certain things than others, which then helps you to create a more efficient plan for how to improve. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my future uploads. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.